Yes, in continuation on this subject matter of Gina, of Gina and the Jinn, based on this comment that we got about two days ago from an anonymous hidden being or person called Gina. You know, and Gina was actually, that's the key right there, that particular name and the fact that they uh, left themselves to be anonymous and hidden and make such a blasphemous and outrageous charge against the King of Kings, against our Godfather, and not provide a shred of evidence, and then make all the statements that we know boldly and, and, and outrightly are lies. You understand? Such as the lie that he is not, has no ormo, you understand, bloodlines. You understand? Um, say that dumb people can quote anything since dumb means you can't speak. You understand? Say that his imperial majesty's father, Ras Mekonen, was an Arab merchant. I mean, how far, in other words, from the truth can you get? And then to lie against his imperial majesty's um, Lich Teferi's earthly mother, Wazero Yashimabed, by um, calling her an Amhara prostitute. Not just a prostitute, but an Amhara prostitute. These are, these are particularly egregious. This is not a joke. You understand? Aras Teferi is not a joke. You understand? The freedom of millions of people is serious business. You understand, lying against the king of kings, having a political dispute about something or a disagreement about something in the government, politics, or something like that, we understand that. You understand, we can engage that. You may not like his match, did this or that politically or whatnot, so forth and so on, so forth and so on. Be that as it may, you and him may be of different tribes or, or whatnot, so be it. You understand, but then to, to, to open your stupid mouth, Open your dutty mouth, you understand? Open your gene-possessed mouth against the king of kings is totally unacceptable and is totally outrageous. You understand? But we know who you are. You understand? We, we understand. We understand who you are. We know who you are. And we want to make sure that our brothers and sisters also know. You understand? So this does not, you know, seem as though a strange thing. A strange thing. So what we're going through right here is from the Islamic perspective or the Arab perspective, as you will find in in Al Quran, chapter fifteen, verse um twenty seven. You will see that it says, "And as for the evil race of jinn, we created before Adam of poisonous fire. Of what? Of poisonous fire." They were created of poisonous fire. And the fire are these lies, blasphemies, and false allegations. Biblically, we'll just call them devils. They are just devils. But they are part of the devil's web. You know what I'm saying? And this is part of the black devils. These are black devils. Yes, there's such a thing as black devils. Now, we already talk about how the jinn, the father of the jinn is the john, the ghanin and the aganint. You see, you have the Aganit. Now, in the Ethiopic, actually, there is such a thing that is translated in the English as um, the screeching demon. The screeching demon. If we could pull that up on our on our search, we'll find that for you. I think it was in um, Isaiah, where where in the Hismatic Bible, it actually speaks about this very same this this race, this being. You understand? Some may think this is mythology. This is not mythology. It's, it, it has myth to it because ancient people were also confronted with those same evil doers. You see, ancient people were also confronted with those same evil doers. Let's let's take a moment and try to and try to bring this up right here, um, so that we can um, so that we can show you exactly where this where this is for a moment. So let's just bring this, uh, the, um, either, either it's on the gin or it's on the gene. It's either on the gin or gene. You understand? And it was very interesting w what it says, the English translation. But until we, um, let's try, let's try, uh, uh, gene. Let's try, let's try, um, gene. 
with an with an I, the gene. All right, um, with the gene right there. Okay, with the gene because the gene, the gene. Uh, let's bring that up. The gene. Excuse me for a moment. Let's show you exactly what's going on here. What we're trying to do is type this in, right? Type this into our search engine. But we have the recorder right there. So let's go right, right, let's do this right here, a J, and put an I, so it's Gene. All right? And let's, let's do this again, um, a J right here. And we're looking up uh, Gen, Gen, the Gen, and let us specify the book of, I think it's Isaiah. But it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting quote um, that is used. Uh, give us a moment right here. Take that off. Okay, take that off and go to the book of Esaias and... Thank you for being patient. Um, let's see, it says nine, nine times. Oh, there it goes, right there, you see? You see right there? That there goes right there. That's it right there. There it goes. And that's in uh, 30 and 14. 30 and 14. So let's, let's uh, reset this up. Reset this up right here. Reset this up. And let's go to 30. Let's go to 30 and 14, right? Let's go to 30 and 14. Um, and 30, what is it, 30, 34. You could uh, 34 and 14. So we're going to go, best of my hour, what the menses could do. So how do I unlock 30 and 14? Now, somebody get the English. You know what I'm saying? Get the English for it because we need to have the English alongside the interpreters for this. And in 30 and 14, here's the sentence in 30 and 14. It says, Ye midre bedam arrawit ka tekulochgar ye genanyalu aga nintem ars versacho ye terralu jinnem bezia. Now let's bring this up in a side by side. This has a side by side um English and it says it says the wild it says the wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl, the screech owl also shall find rest there and find for herself a place of rest. You understand? So right here at Bamarinya, it has the gin. I thought it was gene, but it has it as, uh, let's say, like um, gin like this. Like Jin, J I N, a short, a short I sound, not like the, well maybe similar to the Arabic, a little bit Jin, Jin, Jin right here. So this and this is the same. So we find this in Isaiah, in Isaiah um 34 and 14. So in Isaiah 34 and 14 we find this same screeching owl. This is like a screeching owl. So you can really kind of see the whole occultic, you know what I'm saying, the occultic mystic, the occultic mystic. Now, the John or the Gan, the Gan name in the Arabic is the John, instead of Jinn, it's the John, is the vice master of the Jinn. You know what I'm saying? And the John entices people, it entices you with music and pleasure-seeking. People blindly allow themselves to be seduced by John or by the Ghanaian, the Aganint, and exchange their souls for power. Music has become a great part of the American and European culture, not the type of music that can help you, 
but that does more harm than good. Music today is composed of computerized electronic sounds known as, they call it today, club, club music, hip-hop, rap, you understand? Now, Ethiopians, lost sheep, are being led astray by this type of music, electronic music, which, which predominantly how it is programmed, it is said to destroy one's nervous system and put you, put you out of tune with your creator. Now, it's interesting that the John, which you could say are uh, the Gan, the Gan, the Gan name, the Gan, Right, the Gan, which is the bigger one of the of the Gan name, but then you have the Aganint. You understand? The Aganint is is to say them in the plural, in the plural sense, in the collective, in the collective sense. But the Gan or the John, they also show up in dogs. You understand? Especially so-called black dogs and bull terriers. I know some people are dog lovers, so forth and so on. You understand? But it's even more the reason to be spiritualized because you have to understand that a lot of these beasts, a lot of these beasts are like a lot of people. You understand? They are inhabited by certain spirits. You know what I'm saying? Because unless you really know what happened from that dog from when it was a baby, so forth and so on, and conception, you know what I'm saying? You're basically like running into somebody. You don't know nothing about them. Like this individual Gina, we don't know nothing about them. But what we know is that they're liars. So already, and then we know that their name signifies a race of evil, slanderous demoniacs and devils. So the two and two basically makes four. So we have to square this. You understand? We have to square this. So the, the John or the Gan shows up in dogs, especially black dogs, bull terrier, often other animals. As you can see from the quote from um, Isaiah's Tinbete, Isaiah's, Isaiah, Isaiah's um, prophecy, chapter 34, verse 14, is speaking about the wild beast. Now, it's not just talking about the beast, the beast, but it's talking about certain type of people whose morality and whose spirituality who have become so inhabited with a negative evil spirit. You understand? Whether it is from some sort of ritualization. Uh, a lot of times nowadays it's due to, to false religion and to religion of the fringe, of the foreigners. Whether it's the Mohammedan version of, of Islam or whether it's the counterfeit Romanist version of so called Christianity. You understand? It basically is the same thing. He presents himself as a monster. You understand? In nightmares. The Jan or the Gan. They can walk in the form of a man or a woman, in other words, through possession, possessing complete personalities, com uh, possessing complete personalities. The God of the John is transformed like cursed men, like cursed men and people into monsters, goats, sheep, bullock, donkeys, horses, camels, cats, jackals, frogs, snakes, and many, many more. Now, a lot of folks, of course, will try to dismiss that and say, oh, that's old wives' tales, or oh, that doesn't really happen anymore. But it does happen. It's not just the Nollywood, the so-called Nollywood Nigerian movies, even though those serve us very well in demonstrating you understand, the reality of the belief in these forces and forms. So we should not easily dismiss this, you understand, and think that an individual like Gina or other, other Jin or John or Ghanain or Aganint will be persuaded by logic or truth. Some say, well, if you tell them the truth, they will, and they'll say, well, what's the truth? This is the truth, but they, they've told all lies. There's no truth in them because they are of their father, Diabolos. And what this individual Jin or Jean or Gina presented at our website basically is projection. Psychologically, it's called possession. I mean, projection. P possession of the Jin, of this lying, negative, 180-degree black devil nature, you understand? But then projecting, you understand, onto Ketamawi Hala Selassie, their evil thoughts, deeds, you understand, or the thoughts and deeds or habits and predilections, you understand, of their own of their own people. You understand? Because there's absolutely no substantiation to those lies. But it does not mean that the liars 
because we present the truth, it doesn't mean the liars are going to stop lying. That's one thing we have to grow up. You know what I'm saying? We have to grow up to understand or understand. One more point we want to make on this and sum this up with Jude. Jude in the Bible. Jude. You know what I'm saying? And Jude is one chapter, one chapter only. There is a particular area that, well, this whole chapter actually talks about it and also refers to the Ethiopic book of, of Enoch, of, of Hanok as well. Here in this particular section, it says, um, verse 8, where apostates are described and apostate teachers and, and others proclaimers of these lies and blasphemies you know, are described. It says in verse 8, likewise, also, these filthy dreamers, you see this whole sexual deviancy and, 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 and molesting um, young boys and killing them and throwing them in a, in a lake near a holy mountain. This is all part of their filthy dreams. That's part of Gina and other beings that are possessed with the same sort of evil spirit or negativity. You understand? That's part of their filthy dreams. They defile the flesh. They despise dominion. They despise the fact that Kedemawi Haile Selassie is Moa Anbesa, the Emin Negeda Yehuda, that he's the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. They despise the fact that he is Siyuma Egezi Her, that he is the elect of God, the anointed of God. They despise the fact that he is king of kings of Ethiopia, Nagusa Neges Zechopia, upon the throne of great king David. And they despise David, they despise Solomon, they despise the Metaph Kedus, they despise Moses, they despise the Jesus Christos, they despise everything that is good and everything that is holy. So if they despise Ainaz Rastafari and as Ethiopian Hebrews, it shouldn't surprise us. In fact, we should say hallelujah, because all who seek to live godly, you understand, know, must suffer persecution, even if in this instance, it is persecution in the forms of lies and slanders. So here it says, likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. They despise dominion, the dominion of the king of kings and his Christ, and speak evil. They speak evil of dignities. They speak evil, even though the individual said quite quite um, curiously, King Haile Selassie, and, and even spelt it according to one of the writer forms of spelling, they still went on to despise the dignity of his imperial majesty without a shred of proof or evidence. Yovers. Yet Michael, Mikael, the Lika Melaik, the archangel, when contending with Diablos, devils like y'all, who want to spread these lies and slanders against our Godfather, you understand, against the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, while contending with the devil, Mikael, he disputed about the body of Musa. Does not bring against him a railing accusation, just some basic facts. We don't have to bring against a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked you. But these, these kind of individuals speak evil of those things which they know not which they are totally ignorant. They have no knowledge of the things that they are saying. Because the fact is, we know his imperial majesty's father was not an Arab merchant, nor his mother an Amhar prostitute. I mean, I mean, we know this from a fact. You understand? It's been testified from more than one source, both Ethiopian as well as external, as well as even other tribes and other people, you understand, who are part of the Ethiopian empire, other nations. So they speak evil of those things they know not. But what they know naturally, what they do know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe, woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Kael, of Kayan, of Cain, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam or Balaam for reward, and perish. They perish in the gainsaying of Kore. And we've touched on these characters already in our Torah, Torah scroll readings, in the Rastafari sabbatical studies and, and Sabbath scrolls. So you can understand, if you've been paying attention and studying, you understand 
that there is nothing to fear or to worry about. You know, but we must stay on point. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, both dead in this life. You them because if our jurisdiction was set, you understand that such an individual make such a baseless accusation against the king of kings of Ethiopia, you already know what the law says concerning such things. You understand, they would have forfeited their life, the Yigeda, you understand, Yigeda, period. But there's grace, there's mercy in this time. Our jurisdiction is not full square just yet. You understand, but they still are twice dead, dead in this life and dead in the life to come, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, foaming out their own shame. And what, 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 what would be very interesting is really to find out that this individual who said such thing is probably involved in these things themselves. You understand? Foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Hanok, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these and those, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him have spoken against God the Father, you understand, and God the Son, and we the God children, you understand, we the children of God against the whole family, you understand, of God in Christ. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. So this individual probably said this to probably please somebody else in their set of of Aganint, in their set of demons. You understand? But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, of Adonenu, Yehoshua, HaMoshi, Getachin, Jesus Christos, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, not having the spirit. And it's clear that they don't have the spirit. And what spirit are we speaking about? They don't even have the spirit of truth because there was no truth besides the truth of the person that they were slandering. You understand the fact that he is king. He is king of kings, Haile Selassie. You may have got that part right, you understand. But everything else that you said, you understand, was just a lie. You know, and we ask you, Gina, Jin, God, I got Nin, whatever you are, devil, Satan, Lucifer, to repent. Plain and simple before it's too late. Mm. And you know what? For some of them, it might be too late. But this message is for you. Consider what you say. You understand? While it is still opportunity and while there's still a day to repent. So to my brothers and sisters, Shalom, Salam Tanat, Aina, Yist, Elaine.